Today, we're going to talk about Copenhagen. Copenhagen can signify many things to different individuals, especially if you're young. It's a literal playground, with some of the world's oldest amusement parks and some of the hippest shopping and nightlife areas. Copenhagen's top things to do span its glitz and grit, culture and gastronomy, coffee, craft beer, and more. A world-class public transportation system makes traveling around as easy as possible. Looking for regal castles, novel recipes, and a refreshing 3.9% session IPA? Copenhagen is waiting for you. Let's have a look at the top five things that you can do in Copenhagen. Number five, the mandatory Tivoli Gardens visit. Tivoli Gardens is so well known that some people travel to Copenhagen just to visit it. Tivoli Gardens, located in Copenhagen, is the world's oldest theme park. And if you have children with you, they will have the time of their lives on some of the rides. Visitors can ride the restored century-old roller coaster, watch the famous Saturday evening fireworks display, or simply enjoy the storybook atmosphere. Even if you're not in the mood for a roller coaster or a carousel, the romantic 19th century depictions of the Orient make it an unforgettable place to stroll. A good time to visit is on Fridays during the summer, when the open-air Planen stage hosts free rock concerts by Danish bands and the occasional international superstar. Beginning at 10 p.m., arrive early if it's a big-name act. There are so many entertainment venues in Tivoli, and each one has a unique personality. The open-air pantomime theater, which Wilhelm Dalrope, a Copenhagen architect who also created the Royal Theater, built in 1874, is possibly the most well-known. The large concert hall at Tivoli hosts performances by international symphony orchestras, ballet companies, and well-known musicians. Outside of the primary summer season, Tivoli is also open for approximately three weeks during the Halloween and Easter holidays, from late November to early December for Christmas, and from late February through early April for the winter season. After sunset, when the fairy lights are turned on, cultural events begin, and the nearby clock tower soars in the moonlight, like the set of an old Disney movie. Tivoli is at its most romantic. Number 4. Rosenborg Slot The early 17th century Rosenborg Slot is a combination of turrets, cables, and moats, and was erected in Dutch Renaissance style between 1606 and 1666 by King Christian IV to serve as his vacation place. Rosenborg Slot was built in 1606 to become a summer residence for Danish monarchs a function it served until Fredensborg Slot was built in the 18th century. Today, the castle's 24 chambers are organized chronologically, with furnishings and portraits of each monarch from Christian IV to Frederick VII on display. The underground treasury houses the spectacular crown jewels, including Christian IV's splendid crown and Christian III's jewel-studded sword. Feeling compact at Rosenborg, Frederick IV built a larger palace in the town of Fredensborg, north of the city in the 18th century. Rosenborg was primarily used for official functions and to safeguard the monarchy's heirlooms in the years that followed. In the 1830s, the royal family decided to open the castle to the public as a museum, while still using it as a treasury for royal regalia and jewels. Buy your ticket online to avoid long lines, especially during the summer. There is no need to print a copy of the ticket because it can be sent directly to your smartphone. Additionally, purchasing your ticket online guarantees you entry during your preferred time slot. Number 3. Nyhaven The colorful Nyhaven is one of Copenhagen's most famous sites and a local favorite spot to enjoy a cold beer on a hot day. Not only are the structures in Nyhaven colorful, but the area's history is also vibrant. When ships from all over the world began to dock there, the ports, pubs, alehouses, and ladies of pleasure were compacted with sailors. The canal, 
which was built to connect Congen's Night Wharf to the harbor, has long been a favorite of sailors and writers, including Hans Christian Andersen. While living at number 20, he wrote The Tinderbox, Little Claws and Big Claws, and The Princess and the Pea. And he also lived at numbers 18 and 67. Number 9 house is said to be the oldest here, which has undergone remarkably little change since it was built in 1681. Today, Nyhaven, with its colorful gabled townhouses, salty boats, and foaming beers, is a popular tourist destination. Additionally, it's a convenient location to board a boat tour with the Canal Tours Copenhagen. Today, restaurants rule the old port, and beautiful old houses have been renovated. Jazz music, pavement cafes, and people taking pleasure in the laid-back ambiance and excellent food greet you as you stroll along the canal. Boats line the canal, and canal tours can take you on round trips of the city's other waterways from here, so the region's maritime history is never far away. The annual Christmas market fills the cobblestone street with its festively decorated stalls and sparkling lights during the holiday season making it ideal for your winter vacations. Danish Christmas specialties like Abliskiver and roast pork are available in cafes and restaurants during the holiday season. Being here in the winter is a whole nother experience. Number two, Nye Carlsberg Gliblotech. Gliblotech is an art and sculpture museum in central Copenhagen with a magnificent garden. At Nye Carlsberg Globentech, ancient and contemporary art are on a display in a setting that is truly unique. Brewer Carl Jacobson established the gallery in 1888, which is renowned for its marble sculptures and winter garden. Once inside, you'll find a stunning structure with high ceilings and a beautiful winter garden centerpiece with palm trees edging a fountain and pond. The gallery is divided into two sections, ancient, and modern. The Egyptian, Greek, Etruscan, and Roman art collections housed in the Department of Antiquities provide a delightful stroll through 3,500 years of art and history. Strolling through the corridors lined with marble statues takes you to ancient Greece, Egypt, or Rome. The modern department specializes in Danish painting and sculpture from the 19th and 20th centuries as well as French art from the same time period. Enjoy paintings from Denmark's awe-inspiring Golden Age, as well as French Impressionism, and over 40 works by Gauguin, out on loan until spring 2020. The entire series of Degas's bronzes and 35 Rodin sculptures are also on display in this section. Take a break and refresh yourself in the beautiful and spacious winter garden at Cafe Picnic where you can enjoy a piece of cake, a light lunch, or simply a coffee in the peaceful surroundings. There is also a small bookshop and a souvenir shop at the gallery. The August-September summer concert series is a bonus for visitors. The museum's concert hall, which is evocatively lined with life-size statues of Roman patricians, hosts one-hour classical music performances, usually on Sundays. Number 1. Grab Road de Torv. Grab Road de Torv is a historic square in Copenhagen's heart. This vibrant square, located just off the bustling Sturgit pedestrian shopping street, is named after the friary that stood here in the 13th century. It was destroyed by fire in 1728, bombarded by British troops in 1807, and rebuilt twice once a market hall, and then a hangout for local college students, it's now a peaceful haven with restaurants and bars, many with charming patios. Grab Road Dry Torv Square was a popular hangout for lunch, coffee, or a cold beer in one of the cafes or restaurants with outdoor seating in the 1980s. Students have moved on to more popular inner-city hangouts, but the little quiet square with the big plain tree and fountain in the middle is still popular for a stroll and the occasional outdoor concerts. For a time, Grab Rodre Tour but was known as Ulfaldit's Plads after Court Corfit's Ulfaldit, 
who built a mansion here in the 17th century. Ulfeldt would go on to become the most notorious traitor in Danish history. His mansion was demolished and replaced with a pillar of shame on which passing citizens could spit, and the square was renamed. The pillar condemning Ulfeldt is now on display at the Danish National Museum. Copenhagen's thriving food scene, world-renowned architecture, and furniture design, and rich history make it a popular city to visit even on a tight budget. With all the fun things to do here, do you plan on visiting Copenhagen? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?